Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pop Culture Spread, our fun weekly movie and a streaming news show. Let's talk big news, Jace. Mate, Netflix have done it again. Netflix to officially hit the links for Happy Gilmore 2 with Adam Sandler returning as the ill-tempered golf pro. Wow. We are getting a Happy Gilmore. Yes. on? Oh, my God. This is huge. Wow. It is. It will be. It will be almost 28 years old when we get a sequel, if it came out this year. So it's Paul like going to be 29 years. Yeah. How do I feel about it? Why not at this point? It's going to be on Netflix. I say one. I'm kind of excited. I love Happy Gilmore. And yeah. I love this this comment that Christopher, uh, Christopher McDonald, who, of course, yeah. co-starred in Happy Gilmore, had to say, he goes, I saw Adam Sandler about two weeks ago, and he says to me, McDonald, you're going to love this. I said, what? He says, how about that? And he shows me the first draft of Happy Gilmore 2. Wow, okay. Uh, yeah, he goes, maybe you should cut this out, this audio. I don't want to be a liar. But he did show me that, and I thought, well, that would be awesome. So it's in the works. Fans demand it, damn it. And it's true. They are. Netflix are absolutely going ahead with this sequel. And honestly, at this point, the fans do want it. Let's see. Fan I mean, I'm can he pull Why it off? Can, I mean, yeah. Sam can do it, surely. He can pull it off. He can pull it off. Obviously, there's some you know people who won't be in the sequel that unfortunately passed, yeah. Um, yeah. and that's Carl Weathers, who played yeah. Chubbs Peterson, um, as well as uh, people like Bob Barker, who passed away, Joe Flaherty, Francis Bay, and Richard Kuehl. But populate it with new people. The, the fact of the matter is I can't believe it's taken this long. I thought... We may have gotten one 10 years ago at this point. But I'm, you know what? Why not? Have some fun with it. Age is not really an issue, I think, with this film. Storyline. I'll be interested to see where they're actually going to go. It's been so long. Like, where they're taking Gilmore. Like, I don't know. But I, I would like to think he's wasted his life. Still, yeah, yeah. That's what yeah. I'd like to see him as a complete and utter loser. Just, yeah. Um, or, you know, maybe he's coaching pro. somebody else new. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, Who knows? They could go in any yeah. direction. So any it's, direction. Yeah. yeah. But I, I like the idea. I think it is. And it's big news, dude, because globally that film is adored. Mm. People love it from all over the oh, world. Of Doesn't yeah. know where. And it was a film, if you remember back in 96, wasn't a lot of fanfare. In fact, I think it was only released on video here in Australia. So I think it only didn't get a theatrical release. It just came out in video and was a massive hit, you know. Still this hit. is a time when he had his one-two punch of Billy Madison and then he did yeah. this film. Yeah. And you know, Adam Sandler cemented himself in that period. So, yeah, he's going back to the world, but who hasn't at this point? Yeah. Every, oh, friend, every, every beloved thing from the last 30 years has somehow have. gone back to it. So yeah. it's why not? A hit and some of it a miss. I just hope this is a hit because there's been a few that are just like, you know, coming yeah. to America was just woeful. So, yeah, that, you know, hopefully they can. And there's lots of examples like that too. Hopefully like they Zoolander can that. 2, that was all. Yeah, disaster. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. So, but I'm going to be optimistic, Rick, and I yeah. think hopefully they can make this a good time. And I think it's a safe bet being on Netflix, you know, um, yeah. and the fact that you can make this for – yeah, you know, a decent amount of money without having to invest in a lot. And uh, yeah. dude, do you see the numbers that his movies get? The garbage ones on Netflix no. are usually the some of the most highest streamed movies. So that, no matter what you and me think of some of his less yeah, known garbage, yeah. they make the money. They make money. People love him. That's what it's about. Good on you, Sandler. Well, I'd love to see a trailer. I can't wait for something to come out. So looking forward to it. Yeah. All right, Jace, uh, let's get into some other news, buddy. Mate, I just feel like we just seem to be 
bringing out this news for Fantastic Four every week. They've just hired another cast member. Poker mm-hmm. Face star Natasha Leone is joining the cast of Marvel's Fantastic Four. This is great news. I, I, I love yeah, her. Yeah, we, we, we have no idea what character she's going to no. play, but she is a very unique actress in the way of her personality and her style, mm. and I really like her a lot. And I just think, look at the cast they've assembled for this film already, you know. Um, and they're not all big, big, big names, but they're all quality people, Rick, you know. Yeah. Um, like, And there are some theories of who she could be potentially playing. Um, and I'm just going to get down to who they think she best fits. Um Oh, where was it? Sorry, I feel like I've caught out here. There was Alicia Masters. Now, right. The cast announcement suggests Alicia Masters, Ben Grimm's true love, will be in the movie. So should could she be playing that role? Um, mm-hmm. And I think that's a good guess. I think that's a pretty smart guess. But, yeah. So production's only weeks away at this point. It kicks off this summer. And the director, Shankman, said it is a different in so many ways than what Marvel's ever done before. I wish I could be specific. I wish I could say more. But we are doing things very differently from a story standpoint, from an approach to the filmmaking standpoint that really fits the material. I wish I could say more. I would love to, but I can't. But I think there's going to be unlike anything you've seen before and certainly unlike anything at marvel you've seen before big call big That's call huge. but that We've guy's a good before. director and mm-hmm. he's done big budget films before um well big budget content you know he did he was responsible for wandavision and all that i think this is shaping up to be great and again when you're adding quality people to your movie that's got to give you some optimism right I, know. You, I mean, you've got John Malkovich. I mean, come on. Look at him. He's, yeah, you got John Malkovich, got, Paul Walter um, Hauser. You've yeah. got, like, Pedro. You've got, you yeah. know, everybody, every quality. You know, Ralph Innocent as Galactus is an inspired choice. Dude. Wouldn't it be my first choice, but better than what my first choice would have been. So, mm. no, very cool. And, uh, you know, she's funny too. So, you know, she's going to bring some of her wit to the table. She will always beat Jessica to me from American Pie. <laughs> That's where we first saw her. But she's you know, that is heading up. That's 25 years old this year. Do you know that? Oh, American Pie is 25 years old. Mate, jeez. Unbelievable. Go. Where's the time gone, Jace? Where's the time gone, buddy? There you go. Wow. All right, let's get into uh, some DC news, mate. We've got a bit yeah, of DC we on, definitely mate. have some DC news. Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, gets a 2026 release date with Mortal Kombat 2 hitting theaters next year. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a, it's two stories, really, this one. Yeah, really. one. And, mm. and, yeah, so Warner Brothers has come out and announced that June 26, 2026, will be Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. Now, think about this for a second, Rick. This will be a year later after Superman comes yep. out. So you're going to have Superman, and then you're going to have and Supergirl. So, so it, it is also a very clear indication that DC are going in hard on Superman. Mm. And I think you'll find there will be a lot of Superman content mm-hmm. under James Gunn mm-hmm. well, you know. And so it is interesting because uh, one of the big criticisms over the last few years is the, op- the, 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 the lack of Superman we really got with Henry Cavill. Yeah. You know, 2013, and we really didn't even get a Superman film out of him. Man of Steel was an origin story. And yeah. then, he, obviously, he was in Batman v, uh, v Superman, and then he was in the Justice League. Um, so we really didn't get a lot of him, did we, really? And no. uh, so now they've got their Superman. They've got the Supergirl. And by the way, this the actress that they've chosen is Millie Alcock, is that? Millie... Millie out, Al- yeah. M- Millie Alcock yeah. from House yeah. of Dragon. She was fantastic in that show. Yeah. So they've got a really good actress for this. So I'm, I, I think that is great, and I think it's appropriately timed that we're going to have it a year between the other one. Um, the other one is Mortal Kombat Two, dude. That yeah. comes out wow. late next year in October 24, 2025. Now Mortal Kombat, we have kind of an association with because it was filmed in our hometown. 
made by the first time director who was a commercial South Australian commercial director who's got these opportunities. Now I had problems with the film quite yeah, a lot. I, I've been quite public on my thoughts of the film, although those first 10 minutes that's it awesome. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. Um, I am excited to see what they do with a sequel. And so I'd be keen to see. I do not believe it's been filmed in our hometown again. They've gone to a different location. Okay. But, um, yeah, Les Cole, thank you very much, a character that doesn't exist in the no, I think it's more games. Game. Les it's Cole, funny. more on the characters and actually make the movie about the bloody tournament. That's the whole point. That's right. Yeah. Because the first know, film is a lead-up. It's not yeah. even, you know. But Cole was an irrelevant Character, no, no. there's no need to have him in that, like, yeah, but I know he, st yeah. I know he stole that film with uh, what's his name playing Kano, who was awesome, <laughs> yeah. But right. yeah, I mean, there you go, Warner Brothers is uh, really moving forward with some of the bigger franchises. So, they are, if you think about of recent time, they are going all in, aren't they? I mean, if, it's kind of even in the back of Dune 2, and then. You know, Mad Max, Furiosa, that's got mm. coming out now. They're, they're really investing in these big properties in DC. DC is about to explode. So, um, well, they're just going to pump out a lot of content. There's going to be a lot Are of we gonna get, Yeah, As We're going to so be flooded with it. We're going to get flooded with DC content, but I, I, I'm really hopeful and excited about that because James Gunn's style's never yeah. let us down before. No. So the fact that he believes in, in young Millie, uh, makes me believe in her because I think she's a quality actress. And, uh, you know, I'll be lining up to see a Supergirl movie. It'll be yeah. the first time since 1984. There you go. The Helen Slater. Yeah. I, I just hope the Mortal Kombat's going to be where we want it to be. I mean, don't get uh, me wrong, it made money. The first one made money. Yeah. It did, did well. It didn't, I, could, I had issues with it, but I'm just, I just really hope they nail it with this one. Uh, me too. Me too. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's get into some other Marvel news, Jace. Um, yeah, I we'll love Marvel. this story. I, I love it. I uh, love Agatha this story. Gets an official title for real this time and release date. Plus, when we'll see Daredevil: Born Again and Ironheart. I got to be honest with you, dude. I'm not. I don't really care about Agatha. Okay. I have no hopes for this show. You whatsoever. know why I love this story? Yeah, I love. Hey, look. Firstly, I don't know what the show is going to be like, right? But I do know I love me some Catherine Hahn. She's yeah. an incredibly talented actress, funny, hilarious, and she was absolutely standout character in One Division. No, what I love the most that Marvel marketing has yeah. been trolling us for two and a half years, and that is so brilliant because I think it's got it in here. Uh, uh, they got the list of what they used to be. What they used uh, to what they call it. It's gone through about six different titles. Now let me put it in silent here. Originally it was going to be Agatha the Dark Hole Diaries. Then it was going to be Agatha Half Harkness. Then Coven of Chaos. Then the Lying Witch and the Wardrobe. And then finally Agatha all along. And so what they'd done, they kept fooling the audience yeah. by announcing all these titles. But it was called Agatha all along. And I think that's very clever marketing. I also heard a theory which I thought was awesome is that each one of those titles is actually the episode title for the series. Okay. And I thought if that's the case, that's brilliant too. No, this isn't an Avengers level movie. This isn't going to be anything huge. But I will say. Now, I'm going to watch it because Catherine yeah. Hart is so good, dude, you know, and it's about a witch. I mean, you, you're not, you know, this isn't going to lead into any next film or it isn't going to expand the universe in any way. It's just going to be a standalone series of Catherine Hart. It doesn't I excite mean, me at all. Yeah. I just don't, it, yeah. I'll be watching it. Like Catherine. I'll, yeah, I'll, look, I'll watch it. Of course I'll watch it. You know, look, I could prove me wrong. It could be fantastic. I could really enjoy it. But, yeah, you know, if now I'm not really excited about going, oh, my God, hurry up. I really want this to end. No, there's no anticipation. No, I just no. like the idea of them letting her loose comedically would be a lot of fun. Hmm. And I think that's what this series will be. Um, and, yeah, and, and, look, under the current Disney reign, this series wouldn't be made. 
It's no. only the fact that it got greenlit mm. before Bob Iger came back and started slashing projects that this thing even got off the ground. So um, it's definitely going to be a one-off, you know, unless it's a massive hit. But I think it'll be just a one-off, what, six-episode series. And you know what, mate? It can't get any worse than Echo. So yeah, well, that was a disappointment, wasn't it? God. Oh, to say the least, to say the least. Oh, yeah. All right, but um, what the other news in this story was, and it wasn't just about this, no. it was Daredevil Born Again, which has gone through some change, changing showrunners, going very different from Netflix to mm. now basically being Daredevil Season 4 from Netflix. Um, I'm really excited. In March 2025 is when we're going to get it less than a year away. And, of course, Charlie Cox is back. back. We've got Vincent D'Onofrio returning. Johnny Berthanel is back as the Punish. Deborah Ann Wall and Eldon Henson are back as Karen Page and Foggy Nelson. That's what you want. All the gang is back together. March 2025. Great news. Okay, you want to hear about one show that I'm not really looking forward to as well is Ironheart. No. I couldn't really care less. Um, and it's that girl that made her first appearance in Wakanda Forever. That will also debut a debut in 2025. So, yeah, I don't know what to think about that one either. But, um, again, I would say Ironheart wouldn't exist under the current reign, it probably wouldn't be a series that would be approved if they came up with it today. Uh, I think it's not. being made off the back of the other one. But Daredevil Born Again, I, I think everybody's kind of excited at the idea of them just embracing the past of the show and then driving it forward. So, Because, you know, I, I can imagine why they had to change it. Can you imagine writing the show, but you can never reference Karen Foggy? No. Because you go, oh, well, we, we, we don't want to do the Netflix version. And at some point, they had to just go, bugger it, let's do it. That's what the fans want. Got to listen the fan to the fans. Wants. So. And, we, and we're living in that world now, Rick, where the fans um, are having a very stronger voice in content. Deadpool Wolverine is a classic example oh. of them delivering what the fans want. So, but there I'm, you go. Be interesting. I, I'm looking forward to Daredevil. Yeah, I'm not, I don't really give two craps about Ironheart either. Um, it is what it is. So yeah. we'll see, like I said. All right, but, uh, guys, before we get into the next segment, um, guys, um, also uh, remember to uh, like and subscribe and hit that uh, notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our videos. We really appreciate it. And also, guys, you can hear us on audio podcast, and you can hear that on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, and where all good podcasts are found. All right, Jace, let's get into the train wreck of the week. Who's on the train this week, Jace? Well, this is a train wreck. And, uh, well, it's a train wreck for not the reason you're thinking. Hmm. Liam Neeson and Sharon Stone defend Kevin Spacey. Our industry needs him and misses him greatly. Hmm. Now, the train wreck is the hypocrisy of woke Hollywood. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is I will stand by this. Kevin Spacey did some really dodgy things, really <laughs> dodgy things in a culture that supported it for many decades. And he should pay the price for the sins that he did, inappropriate, mm -hmm. you know, with a minor who was 17 at the mm -hmm. time and things like that. 100%. Um, Agreed. He deserves, but it's been 10 years. Are we now, when you look at what's happened over the last 10 years, the sheer amount of poor behaviour that Hollywood has exposed and yet they still continue to work today, where does Kevin Spacey hit into this? Why should he be a, one of the lone people that can't get back into the industry when others have done similar things? We hmm. just talked about recently, earlier in this story, about Will Smith. Yeah. Less than two years later, he's heading up a Hollywood film and he did something quite offensive. You know, maybe not on the degree. Of, no. And and don't get me wrong, man, clearly say I would not compare the two and that is a little bit different. But you have to kind of say that he hasn't been charged legally and most of the cases against him have been dismissed. If you look into what's happened with Kevin Smith, sorry, Kevin Spacey, not Kevin Smith, <laughs> Kevin Spacey, yeah, like there is 
some questions to be asked around did he do everything that people are accusing him on because there's been a lot of lack of evidence around there. And, you know, Liam Neeson and Sharon Stone, and I think they're going to be the beginning of people brave enough to put their careers on the line by supporting him. Uh, but there are also people that I've spoken to, they love me, right? He blames fear for my only rich and public. Oh, Chris, uh, Kevin Spacey sat down with Chris Como in News Nation. Yeah. There are lots of people I've spoken to me. They love me. They believe in me. They stood with me in private, but they're afraid to stand up. And I've been very fortunate that people have been honest about that. And I think that's a shame that they've come to a place in society where people are afraid to say what they believe and what they feel. They're afraid they're going to get cancelled too. And that is true. Following the interview, Spacey posted the following on X. Long-time watcher, first-time guest, it's honoured to join you on the other side of Woke Chris. Hmm. Okay, the two-part documentary, Spacey Unmasked, aired early this month and featured unheard testimonies from men about their experiences with the actor. In a statement to The Telegraph, Liam Neeson said while he was deeply saddened to learn of these accusations, he believed he should be able to return. Kevin is a good man and a man of character. He's sensitive, articulate, and not judgmental, with a terrific sense of humour. He's the only he is also one of our finest artists in the theatre and on camera. Personally speaking, our industry needs him and misses him greatly. Sharon Stone clock, clocked mm. in and said, I can't wait to see Kevin back at work. He is a genius. He's so elegant and fun generous to a fault, and she goes on and on. Other actors who've come forward to Stacey's defence include the great F. Murray Abraham um, said, I vouch for him unequivocally. Who are these vultures who, are, who attack a man who has publicly accepted responsibility for certain behaviour, unlike so many others? And this is the point. He's come forward and went, yeah, okay, look, I was hitting on 20, 21-year-old guys. A lot mm. of younger guys, and I was trying to get my get my freak on. I liked younger guys, um, but it's not illegal. The one was seventeen, I think, wasn't illegal either. Might have been, might have been illegal. I have to look into that. The great Stephen Fry um, has come in out of support, so they keep coming because at the end of the day, Rick, and I don't expect you to put your thoughts on the line for this one because it is a tricky one to comment about, but it starts to raise a lot of questions, this. Not just around Kevin Spacey, but Hollywood in general. Accountability happened only for a short amount of time and not everyone was made accountable. So how long could, could Kevin Spacey be banned for life? How many should others he, have been banned for well, life? Well, let's <laughs> just say with Kevin Spacey, should he never work again in Hollywood? That's the question. And if you go, no... Then yes, Rick. Like you're just about to say, look how many others haven't been. Let's let's get them. It's got to open the door. So if Hollywood say, well, let's bring back Kevin Spacey. Let's bring back all the others that I've done wrong. You know, um, where where do you draw the line? Um, I don't know. I think it has to be a case by case basis. I think. I don't think. You know, you can't argue the the point that. Oh, okay. Let's. Bring Kevin Spacey back means Harvey Weinstein could be a producer oh, again. Yeah. No, it doesn't mean yeah. that. It has to be case by case. Mm. Um, and now, this is the most important thing, I think. In a statement, Spacey added, I have consistently denied and now successfully defended numerous allegations both in the US and the UK, both criminal and civil, and each time have been able to source evidence undermining the allegations and have been believed by a jury of my peers. That raises things, right? Mm. He hasn't been filmed guilty of shit. He hasn't been. That's right. He's gone through the so courts. It's been a witch that. hunt. It could be mm. argued it's been a freaking witch hunt and maybe he's done bad behaviour and he's admitted to having some bad behaviour, but he hasn't been found guilty criminally or civilly. I love Kevin Spacey as an actor. I poor, yeah. I was disgusted and horrified when I heard the accusations. But if the man's innocent, what the hell? Yeah. 
I don't know. He's got some backing of some big people there, so who knows? We might so, hopefully see him back on the screen relatively um, soon. Who knows how Hollywood's going to do it? But, about yeah. Hollywood is, itself is the train wreck of the week. That's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that, that about wraps it up for this week's show. Uh, we had some great stories we spoke about. Just before we go, guys, you can catch myself and Jace obviously on this channel. All the links are down below. Jace, uh, you're on some other channels. Where can they catch you? Around? Yeah, you can you can find me over at Captain's Quadrant, where I'll be live in person with them at Trek Long Island in two weeks. Rick, I'll be yeah. over in New York for a week. So we'll be taking a week off there. Sorry, mate. Sorry. Right. And because uh, uh, I will be in a plane at that time. <laughs> and uh, and then also you can find me at Jason Roy Gaston channel and come over to my TikTok where yeah. I, I throw up all these great clips of nostalgic stuff from television from all our used, and it's kind of a lot of fun. So and yeah, that's it. But most importantly, you can find me here every week on the pop culture spread, movie and streaming news. Awesome. Fantastic. Thank you very much, guys. We will see you all on next week's episode. See you then. See you, guys. Thanks for watching. If you could do us a massive favor and hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell. Also, come and check out us on all our social media accounts and uh, keep up to date. And if you're looking for some clothing, you're needing some merch, we've got you covered at the Pop Culture Spread Store.